Ok, c'est parfait. Oui. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Welcome back to Moose on the Loose. My name's David and today's top stories, we've got Christia Freeland doing stupid things as usual. We've got more carjackings. We've got some devastating effects of the carbon tax on real people, as well as Palestine protesters are now blocking BC ports and they're blocking airports in America. First off, we got this post here on X by uh, FlexJS. I like this one because it really just shows it pretty straightforward. There's this video that Justin Trudeau put out of carbon tax. It's just the more it's the same garbage we always hear. You live in one of these provinces? No, I do not. I live in BC. I don't get carbon tax rebate. Do you pay taxes? Then you're getting money in your bank account. No, I'm not. It's called the Canada Carbon Rebate. <laughs> I'm getting all sneezy once Trudeau starts speaking. I'm a, I think I'm allergic to Trudeau. You can see his post here. It says I purchase about 70 liters of fuel per week to get to and from work, the carbon tax is 14.31 cents per liter. Here's the math, 70 liters, HST, 13 weeks, is $147. The rebate he gets is $140. So this rebate doesn't cover his carbon tax, and this is calculated out. You get the rebate, whatever, every few months. So this is basically showing here, he says, so this does not even covering back my carbon tax I spend on my fuel, let alone natural gas for my house, the amounts baked into literally everything I buy. It's 8 out of 10 crap is bull crap. Show me your calculations. I mean, it goes for everything. If you buy a t-shirt, that has to get trucked. They're going to pass that cost along onto you. I've noticed that the shipping rates have just gone up. If you just, the rates for anything get shipped anywhere, whether you're buying a t-shirt or you're buying a, a coat for your donkey or whatever it is, <laughs> everything's gone up. This is a, a simple but effective clear breakdown showing, yeah, the carbon tax is complete garbage, but we all know that. Did you include the GST on the carbon tax? That calculation does not include the downstream increase in cost when the carbon tax is applied to manufacturers, farmer, da, da, da. No tax is ever returned to taxpayers. Yeah, exactly. Jump to the next one here. We've got Canada Proud has got this video here of Pierre Polyev at a food bank. Everything costs more. Work doesn't pay. Housing costs have literally doubled. And British Columbia has the worst housing crisis in the world, definitely in the developed world because of uh, NDP liberal policies. Uh, but the good news is that life wasn't like this before Trudeau and it won't be like this after he's gone. Pierre Polyev dropped by the Vancouver Food Bank. He claims its usage has more than doubled over eight years of a liberal government, thanks in part to rising housing costs and the carbon tax. Polyev has made three demands for the budget, axed the carbon tax for farmers, set home building targets for local government, grant funding, and a cap on government spending. Food banks pushed to their limit only in Trudeau's Canada. We got a video here coming from uh, Wall Street Silver. People have nothing to eat, people are homeless. Canada is not a place it used to be. Like, just listen to this. A mother has to explain to her kids why they can't have ice cream or they can't have food. That this is all she can buy them. God, it just fucking broke my heart. This has to stop. Do you guys not see what they're doing? Yeah, everybody's sitting there complaining about it. What are people doing about it? We need to stop. We need to stop paying taxes. We need to stop going along with this narrative. People are homeless. People have nothing to eat. I don't even want to go shopping anymore. I don't because every time I go, you either see an elderly person not being able to pay for it. You're taking away your money. Look at your paychecks, guys. Look at your pay stubs. This is the face of Canada right here. That's this is how bad things have gotten. Justin Trudeau doesn't care. The liberals do not care. They're getting paid their three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. They're getting rich off the back end of all their crooked deals and whatever the heck they're doing there and housing buddies with the bankers. I suspect now that they have close ties with the bankers and by jacking the housing rates, the bankers are the ones getting rich. That seems like the biggest play here, why they would be pushing everything. They push the immigration so hard is to get their banker buddies rich. Thus, they give them kickbacks on the side or whatever, make a, a deal there. We'll jack the immigration. You guys reap the rewards of interest payments on, on houses. It's 
The whole thing is just broken, man. Speaking of broken, we've got an attempted carjacking here in... I'm not even going to try to say this because you guys are going to say I say it wrong. <laughs> Terwilligar, which is uh, Edmonton, rec center. We were driving on Ledger Road by the Terwilligar rec center at 10.45 p.m. last night when three young adults surrounded the car and stopped us on the road. One of them tried to open the car doors. We saw them mouthing for us to get out of the car. They only left because another car showed up behind us. We were pretty unsettled as we've never encountered something like this in Edmonton. Dash cam footage is attached. They seem young, so just wanted to warn others in the area to watch out. This seemed like it could escalate to more dangerous behavior if there are weapons involved. There's no audio on this. You can see the three dudes. Like, what is this? <laughs> they, they, they got branches that cut off a tree? <laughs> what is this? This guy looks like he's wearing a diaper on his head. What is that? He's got a hoodie over a diaper or something. He's gonna hit the car with a branch? What? <laughs> They're gonna try to carjack that. You know, this kind of stuff doesn't happen in America because everyone's, everyone's armed there. It's like someone tries that, it's just like, they just take care of it. And I don't like the culture going down on there. You know, they've got all the stuff with their schools like that. They've got other problems, but we need something in the middle here where you can't just have people stealing cars willy-nilly and there's no punishment for it. At the very least, our cops should be given the right to shoot. So if they, there's a carjacking in process, the, the cops can take them out. Like, we don't need these people here. They're just a, a disease in our country. They go around stealing our cars. If you're unaware, insurance rates in Canada are skyrocketing. I've seen some come out in Toronto. They've literally, literally doubled the uh, insurance rates on cars because of the carjackings. At what point do Canadians not have to take this to our own hands and start, you know, punishing these people for doing this stuff? On to our main story here. Christia Freeland, just the king of doing stupid stuff. So what we have here, you can see there's this, this video here. Basically, there's a tradition, and I'll read it off here. Pre-budget tradition, Freeland signs budget direction with new shoes. So basically the tradition here is, you can see, uh, is to buy a new pair of shoes to signal the direction the government plans to take the, in the coming year. So Freeland opted for a black pair of heels ahead of the release of the federal budget on Tuesday. What's the black pair of, uh, of heels represent? Darkness? <laughs> Chaos? <laughs> C'est parfait. Oui. Merci beaucoup. Ça va bien. Oui, ça va très bien. Très confortable. Vous avez raison. Oui. Merci. Je vais démontrer. OK, great. Comfortable. A little bit of a heel. A yeah. smaller right. person maybe is helped by yeah. that. Um, and also really comfortable. Leather inside out. OK. Uh, the leather we use is always leather that is closed from the factory, so it's better for the environment also to work close to the factory with all their local partners. Um, and she designed them. Yeah. We, all, we have uh, one store in Montreal, one in Toronto, and we opened now two years ago in New York. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Do they not understand the optics of this? People are sleeping in tents like... Just stop with this crap. Why don't she just say, you know what, instead of spending the money on this, let's just go down to the street and find someone who's who's on hard times here and just give them a thousand bucks. Like, to show up too with all these shoes, it's just like, come on. These dumb traditions, they, they just show that the government doesn't really care about the people. They waste money on frivolous, stupid things. Speaking of stupid things, <laughs> buckle up for this one. So what we've got here is Palestine protesters blocking... You can see here, anti-Israel protesters shut down Canada's largest container port in BC. I don't know how this is not a federal crime that puts these people in jail for like 10 years. Like they have big laws against this stuff. You can't do this stuff, but cops don't care. Woke till we're broke. Because have, uh, have no fear. Victory is very near. Victory is very near. These people are holding up commerce. They should be arrested, yes. Because the problem is, if they don't arrest these people, then why don't... We should all just go break the law. Why don't we just start robbing banks and do whatever the heck we want? Because if, if the laws are not 
<laughs> enforced. You know what I mean? You're setting the, the wrong tone here. You have to rest these people. It's just like the guys holding up the smoke grenades up on the excavators and stuff. I was able to track down the original source. And we can see here. Palestine will live forever! Palestine will live forever! What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Justice! When do we want it? Now! Why don't you guys go over there and fight? What, what is doing this in our country helping? Causing financial ruin to businesses running their trucks through there does not solve that crisis. You have to go over there and fight. You don't win by being obnoxious in Canada. Like, how is this legal? How are these people not all put in the paddy wagon and put in jail? You can't block major ports. There, I found an article here from City News, and it basically says right here, Terminal Operator, operator GCT Canada said that protesters' actions were illegal and stopped container trucks from accessing Delta Port facility blo by blocking the Roberts Bank Causeway for several hours. You know how much money goes in and out of those containers? This is like wiping out these people's life savings in a matter of hours. Based on how Canada operates, I think it's time to, to, to crack down the laws here. And if it's $300,000 in fines, that's what it's going to cost. You can't just go willy nilly. I'm tired of seeing that stuff. Standing on excavators with smoke grenades. This is not how, this is not how Canada's run. It's like, yeah, you got to learn how this country runs first before you come in. You can't just come change it. Port of Vancouver is the largest port in Canada and GCT Delta Port is the largest container terminal with capacity of holding 2.4 million standard 20 foot containers uh, every year. GCT spokesman Marco Devenko said the company was not warned about the blockade beforehand and did not know why Delta Port was targeted. Exactly. They're basically claiming that the, you know, these shipments are going over to Israel, but it's like, dude, this is going to south america they're going to asia to china to europe like what kind of idiot would would send do this kind of protest here thinking this is the right thing to do this is not how our country operates otherwise everything goes into to disarray that's how this works over here in canada so based on a study here they say uh eight trains and 3500 trucks moving in and out every day based on a 2021 study oh dude there's there might be millions of dollars that they're on the hook for now <laughs> 3500 that's eight hours, man. I don't think they thought this one through. They might be in the hole here for like millions of dollars. Protest is illegal, right? But a blockade is not. If the protest is deemed illegal blockade that disturbs the peace, it could be, it should be removed. The Delta Police Force Department said earlier that the officers were on the scene and had been working to restore use of the roadway. The BT protest contingent said more than 100 demonstrators participated in the blockade. You see here, yeah, I mean, a lot of people there. You guys didn't think this one through, though. I don't think you really understand the economic effect. You're now hurting us. You're hurting Canadians by doing this. We let you in and then you hurt us. It's not, you, you have to think this stuff through. Because in general, Canadians are very supportive of like, we don't like what's going on over there in Palestine, but you can't hurt us. This is not how this works. You can see there's a huge line of trucks. This was a bonehead thing to do. And there's got to be financial repercussions. I, every single company that owns one of these trucks has got to be suing these people. I can only imagine. The problem we have is there's too many people thinking they can do whatever they want, like You can't call for people to go back to Europe. This is Canada, man. One thing I can note here, I looked up the smoke grenades and what the laws are. They are legal in Canada, which I was surprised about, but only on private property. The only way you can use these in the streets if it's approved by the city. And I'm calling complete BS that these are approved by the, the, the government. If so, let's see it. These people should all be round up and put in jail. You can't just run around with your... your your face covered. It's illegal in Canada to cover your face and protest. And then you're, you're adding this too. Like, why are the cops not doing anything? Here, right here. Is it unlawful to wear a mask disguise and protest? It is a criminal offense under the criminal code of Canada to wear a mask or disguise. So once again, multiple laws are being broken here daily. It's just like, you're setting a rule now. If the police do not act on this stuff, then more and more Canadians are just gonna start breaking the law. And this is gonna turn into some third world country like you see in south america or africa where there's just this rampant crime everywhere because there is no punishment what else is going on here is this is, seems to be a coordinated effort because in uh chicago they blocked an airport like how is this not 
you know, rolling in 25 cop cars and just rounding these people up and throwing them in jail. You can't block an airport. I don't get what... <laughs> you know traffic's bad when people are literally sitting on top of their cars and walking to the airport. Wow. <gasps> oh, there's a protest. That's annoying. So there's cops there. They're just not doing anything about it. I mean, there's what here? 30 people? There has to be at least <laughs> double that here. Couldn't you just go one for one and drag the people out of the way? If I had to catch a flight, I'd be dragging all these people out of here. I don't care what they're protesting. This is not where you do this stuff. These people need to learn. When you get welcomed into a country, you don't crap on the citizens. This is disrespect. There's no, this doesn't make any sense. It's obviously not thought through. You should try to rally more people around you and pissing them off is not the way to do that. Go back to the drawing board and come up with better way to rally people's support. It's through like heartfelt imagery and, and messages, not through pissing off people who need to get to an airport. And shame on the cops for not stepping in there and, and clearing this out. These are major infrastructure points. It seems woke till you broke here, we, Canada and the US, is there's no there's no more laws in this country. Just do whatever you want, I guess. That's what the rule here is. Do we all just put on masks and start running around? You know, when I grew up as a kid, anyone who put on a mask was only one thing. They're a bank robber. That's what they were. You put on a mask, you're a bank robber. Or it's like minus 30 outside and that's the only time you're allowed to use those masks. You were not allowed to put those masks on. It was just a, it was just a common public thing. You could not cover your face with a ski mask or any sort of face covering like that unless it's minus 30 outside. And I get it, there's different cultures and stuff, but if you want to come to our country, you have to be part of our rules. You can't put face coverings on and protest. You can't pull smoke grenades and jump on excavators. You're breaking three laws in one, one go right there. With how bad things are in Canada right now, if you're one of the Palestine protesters, you need to rethink your your approach here because that's you're doing the wrong you're doing everything wrong that just giving to you a straight you got to go from the heart you got to get people to, to feel from the heart not destroy people's livelihoods who have run your shipping companies or have or waiting for products to come in off the ships because you're not getting any support doing it that way so you need to rethink your approach if you want to be successful let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this. I just, I know if I was a, <laughs> had a business that relied on those, those uh, shipments, I would be, I would be calling the lawyers what I would be doing, honestly. Uh, I can only imagine, you know, people losing the hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars are probably be super pissed. And let me know what you think about Christian Freeland upholding the stupid tradition of the shoes. Like, that's got to go. It, it's just so... <laughs> You know, it's one thing if the country is absolutely just smashing it and everyone's doing well, then sure, yeah, get some shoes. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it's cute. But with how, th how bad things are, how did they think that was a good idea? How did she think, yeah, yeah, let's get me some new shoes. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> Twitchy McWeirdo. Thanks for watching the end of the video here. I greatly appreciate everyone. Be sure to subscribe, hit the notifications, get notified of all the videos. We'll keep fighting for freedom. I'll see you guys in the next one.